and uh, call this uh, October 10th at the City Council meeting to order. <clears throat> Is there any amendments uh, to the agenda? Yes, I'd like to add uh, private sewer connections under our sewer. Um, I thought we could talk about it under the sewer rate increase. So we're going to have like an F1 there? Yes, and that'll be quick. Private sewer connections? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other agendas? Any other amendments to the agenda? If not, uh, we're going to go right to our visitors. And uh, we'd like to welcome Samantha Dunn from uh, our Housing Vermont Community Development Block Grant. we uh, talk about Ernie Lane Housing Project. And I'm also here with, um, I'm Elise Shanbacker. I'm with the Addison County Community Trust. I think last time I was here talking about the sidewalk extension out to McKnight Lane. Um, so we're here because um, Housing Vermont and um, Addison County Community Trust, we call ACCT, so you don't have to say all those words, um, are partnering to develop um, a parcel of land that Housing Vermont owns on Armory Lane um, that was subdivided, I think, uh, back in 2009. As folks know, we, um, the two organizations partnered in two, 2012 to build the Armory, Armory Lane Senior Housing. Um, and we are now uh, exploring the feasibility of developing a second multifamily um, building on lot number two, it's called, uh, sort of right across Armory Lane um, from, the, from the senior housing facility. Um, and we're looking at uh, 20 to 25 units of mixed income housing. We're excited, I don't know if folks are aware of the housing bond that passed um, at the state level allows us to um, really provide more mixed income housing as opposed to limiting um, the housing to, to the lower um, income where we've been restricted to in the past. So we're hoping this project will allow us to take advantage of those funds and 25% of the units would be um, for um, folks making up to 120% of the median income. That's what that housing bond allows for. Um, and in uh, Virgins, for um, a single person, that's about $62,000 of income or $90,000 for a family of four would be the maximum. So work, regular working families, um, which most of our, our housing serves anyway. Um, we know there's a lot of demand for this housing. ACCT has a waiting list for the senior housing with, uh, I think, 67 different households on it that we know we could serve a lot of those folks um, right across the street, allowing them to access some of the same services in the same location. And then there's additional uh, 87 households on their waiting list, look just uh, families, single people, all different ages, uh, looking for housing. And um, reports tell us that the, the rental vacancy rate in Addison County is, is right around 1%, between 1 and 2%. So that's really low. There's, people are, are really looking um, for housing. So we're excited about um, this project and having the opportunity to build it. One um, piece is that we really need to access um, funds available through the CDBG program to be able to, to bring it all together. Construction costs are really high. We need to sort of access all the funding sources that we can, and we know that um, in 2007, 2007, I believe, the city passed a resolution saying they wouldn't consider using CPBG funds, um, and I think then um, made an exception for the senior housing. So we um, are back to ask um, if this uh, council would consider doing away with that resolution. Um, I think it wouldn't. It wouldn't impede the city at all being able to weigh in on a specific project. Obviously, any application the city needs to support. Um, but right now, with that resolution, we know we, we don't even have a chance of accessing those funds. So we wanted to come and talk to folks about that and hopefully answer any questions that you might have. Or if you have anything to add. Yeah, happy to you know answer any questions about Addison County Community Trust and our other properties. I think. I don't want to, you know, folks probably remember from last time, so I'll just field the questions if you have any. We're very anxious to see a second housing unit for seniors to come to town. I, know. I hear a lot about that. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, <clears throat> any 
anybody have any questions? Uh, can you tell me when, can you tell me the history behind that resolution? Uh, I'd love to, but I wasn't city manager at the time, so okay. Rennie, but, Rennie, but I, I, I certainly know about, <laughs> I certainly can talk about taxation. I know how taxation works. Uh, and so, but Rennie, Mike was mayor at this time. Nobody else, right? I'm reading the bottom. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, they have a copy of the resolution, uh, Samantha. Uh, so Rennie, uh, you know, Rennie was city manager at the time, so I, I can't. Other than I, I understand this, I understand this resolution. Uh, I will, I will just tell you that, you know, whereas the change in taxation, uh, you know, has adversely affected the amount of tax revenue Virginians may receive from these units. And if I understand, I read this thing earlier. Uh, it was like until the law changed is what is I believe what this was saying. Right. But Rennie can give, you know, might be able to give, shed some light on uh, what prompted this. Well, what I can remember, and uh, the the reaction with the council at the time was pretty strong, actually, um, being a, against uh, a project. And I had worked with Housing Vermont for quite a quite a while, actually, to develop the preliminary plans for building out that whole area. Um, and um, um, I, I think the reaction was uh, a couple of things. One, taking more uh, taxable property off the tax rolls. And the other part was the feeling was that the city already had its more than fair share of at that time what was considered low income housing. Mm -hmm. and and. We knew at the time that there was a demand for senior housing. Um, there probably was a demand for low income housing at the time also, but uh, the combination of the tax deduction and the, um, uh, that we had so many units already in the city that we felt, I, don't, I shouldn't say we because I was only the city manager, I, didn't, I don't make any of these decisions at then, but um, the, um, it, it was felt that uh, it was enough, basically. Um, I don't think there was much to it. Do you remember much more than that, Mike? No, I think it, it was the general feeling of the council at that point, like Rennie said, uh, that our, our tax rates were, that the, the citizens were bearing the burden of ha allowing more uh, lower income uh, individuals to come into the, the community where, where it, was, it was just causing them a, us a hardship. We were having a lot of, um, uh, like John Graham, uh, there was ACAG and other buildings in, in the city that we were not getting um, taxation on that at the, at the point. So it was. Uh, yeah, and I would just, I think there's some confusion when people hear this at first. These um, parcels aren't removed from the tax rolls, They're, they have just a different way of um, assessing the property tax rate on them. So we um, at Housing Vermont just did a quick look, and it looks like. For the properties that Housing Vermont and ACCT owned together in Virgins, we paid about $100,000 last year in property taxes. So while it's a different way of um, determining the value of the property for taxation, they're not removed from the, from the tax rolls. And in this particular instance, we're talking about new construction, so a parcel that is currently on the grand list for about $130,000. You know, you might see that go up to almost a million dollars. Right. Um, and, and what would we be able to get ta or tax? So looking down the, the taking the taxes our properties paid in Virgins in 2016 divided by their valuation, it was just over 2%. Yeah, and, and I think what that means, and uh, I'm just looking over Elisa's shoulder, in 2016 we paid $3,000 in taxes on lot two on Armory Lane, an undeveloped parcel. And when we're estimating what we're gonna be paying um, once the building is up and running, it's around 19 or $20,000 annually. And, and for that parcel, because we own it, you know, it's either gonna be three or it's gonna be 20, but there, you know, that's, you know, I think it's gonna sit or hopefully it's gonna get developed. And we think we have a really great um, project to develop there, and again, opportunity to house a lot of those seniors that are wait on the wait list for Armory Lane. And yeah, we're excited to be partnering with Vermont Integrated Architecture on the architecture as well, and so 
I think it'll be a really nice addition to that area back there on Armory Lane. Just a question to Mel. Um, so this new way of, I guess, new way of taxation, it's kind of a formula thing, I believe. Is this the same formula thing that we have had a, several appeals? Well, the, the, you only had one, you only had one appeal. Um, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of how many, you know, uh, how many, uh, I think that there, let's just say that I could do a, I could run a report off the grand list of, uh, uh, of how many properties have a rental housing subsidy covenant. I think that there's 10. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm too far off in that number. First off, how the how the system works is that you, uh, you we value property based on based on construction less depreciation. We place a value on it, and I can tell you that under the law, any 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 property that has a rental housing subsidy covenant, we are supposed to be calculating that value based on the income approach of which. Most of you are familiar with, given the appeal by um, uh, by BB BB2. All right. Now I can tell you, there's we have some properties in town that have a rental housing subsidy covenant, but they they don't supply us with the income in, and expense information to be able to value those properties in that manner. And you know, they really they really should, or we should be soliciting. I don't know who the bur who the burden is on, whether or not it's the Board of Listers should be reaching out to people to get information so that we can properly calculate their taxes or whether or not the property owner should be mailing us the, that information on an annual basis so that the listers can calculate the value. But let me just tell you right now, there's only two or three that I know of that we run this calcu that we that the value is based on that calculation. And so it's a it's a spreadsheet that you've all you've all seen. It, it's based on the, the 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 revenue less the expenses, and uh, you use a cap rate and you it calculates a value. Um, on, on top of that, I will I will tell you that any property that has a rental uh, that has a rental housing subsidy covenant, they also get a discount. Uh, of 10% off from their education taxes, just the way that the system works. Um, I, won't, I, won't, I won't bore you with all that. I guess the thing, you know, I'm, I'm in a little bit of a difficult spot because I'm sitting next to the mayor who signed a resolution in 2007, sitting next to a city manager that was here in 2007 and six other people sitting on this board. I really think that there's a problem with the law all right, and but I don't know that the resolution, in all due respect, I, I think that this resolution is taking a sledgehammer to a to a problem. I just I'm not so sure that this is the way I would have. I know I know Rennie. I can tell that you had a hand in writing this, but you people like you and I, when we're city manager, we just do what we're told, and right. we make it look pretty and right. put it in front of you, and this is what you wanted, and you signed it. All right. So one of the things, I guess, you know, I can, you know, the, it speaks about, you know, you know, provide more housing and additional property tax expense to the taxpayers. There isn't any expense going on here. We're talking about new money is what we're talking about. And I can tell you that houses in Vermont, the legislature passed a law that if you have a property that has a rental housing subsidy covenant, then though there is a methodology of how you calculate that value, and when you when you depress the rents from when you value a piece of property using market rents compared to contracted rents, of course the revenue stream is going to be different. That's the that's the deal. Uh, your expenses, we can have a lot of debate about whether or not reserve funds are le legitimate or not. But the bottom line is is that it. When you run those calculations, you will come up with a lesser value than you would if it did not have those subsidy covenants, all right? It is absolutely discounted because the revenue stream has been forced uh, lower. That's the deal. The other thing I was reading through this a little bit, trying to figure out, because there's another, there is also another 
reduction that occurs out there. I think we have, Joan, maybe another 10 or 12 single family homes that are uh, owner occupied right. or by an eligible entity like Addison County Community Trust owns 25% of the, or a share of the value of the home. And, and uh, I won't bore you with the, the complications of how that works over time, but yeah. basically it, it, it allows someone to purchase a home that they couldn't normally purchase because they, with conventional <coughs> financing. And so you're able to buy a home that the, uh, that a, let's say you start out with 25% of the home is funded uh, through an agency and they really own, they do own 25% of the home and the owner owns 75% of the home and then uh, as time goes by and the value of that property increases, the percentages switch whereby the owner, on, the owner only gets 25% of the increase in, in value and the, the equity shareholder of 25 gets 75% of the, the shareholder. Those properties, we, we discount. The law requires us, requires us to discount those properties 25 to 30 uh, percent of the value. We, we just, because I do have a hand in this, we, we discount them 25 percent. We don't discount them 30, we discount them 25. So, the, uh, uh, so those properties, you know, had they not had that restrictive covenant, there's no question there. They, if they didn't have it, we would collect more money, all right, on a single family home. I think this is, you know, I'm trying to find the word rental, all right, and uh, affordable housing units with restrictive covenants on rental or sale revenue have the benefit of paying reduced property taxes. You know, you know, I don't, I don't know. If the right word reduced is right. There's a different methodology. The other thing is that really provide more housing and additional property tax expense to the city. The city's not spending the city's not spending any money. So what I wonder is here we are in 2017. There's uh, resolutions are are written, passed. They're in the records. That's the law of the land until Joan or I are told otherwise. If the city council, if there's a majority of the city council that wants to to uh, um, Declare that rescind rescind that resolution. It's a it's a motion, a second, and if the vote is there, and there it is. Um. Well, I probably had a hand in writing this, and it was probably based on whatever the law was at that time. And I'm not sure that the law was the same then as it was now, or it is now. Um, I mean, from a personal basis. Um, uh, I, I was city manager, as, as Mel said, the city manager does what the city council wants him to do. <laughs> and, and personally, uh, I was surprised at, at the reaction and this resolution, quite frankly, uh, because um, I had worked with Housing Vermont for several years to get to the point of having plans to develop that property. Um, to have it go down in flames. Um, so it was kind of a surprise to me at the time. So if I express my personal um, feeling about it now, <clears throat> despite the fact that it, there is less property tax, um, we will get money still that we don't have, have now. Um, the way that property is tied up, unless housing Vermont uh, just uh, waits for a long time and finally gives up and says we'll sell it to openly to, to anybody who wants to buy it. That's not their way of doing things. Um, is that it'll just sit there not earning anything or very little uh, compared to what it should be earning. Um, and we need the housing. We do, we do have more than our proportionate share of what people might term low income housing. We have lots of units for the size of the city. Um, but I don't know what, what, what you may consider to be too much. Um, the property is there, the plans are there, there are the people who need the housing, um, and under the new laws and so on, with the mixed income, there's a whole different mixture of uh, incomes 
the folks who would be in there. Um, I, I personally don't see any reason why we shouldn't rescind that resolution, or maybe we don't even have to rescind the resolution. I, if, we, if we endorse the, uh, the uh, block grant application, then we've rescinded the, <laughs> we've rescinded the uh, uh, resolution because we've taken the action necessary to move the, the project forward. So that's my opinion. I, I totally agree that we need elderly housing. There's so many people waiting, and it's really difficult when they've sold their home and they have nowhere to go. And unfortunately, I have two clients on waiting lists. So I would move that we rescind the resolution and move forward with a block grant approval. I have a motion. Second. And Lowell has a second. And just, uh, you know, 10 years ago, the thought process was one way, and maybe correct it that time, but I think I got enough tire tracks on my back right now, so. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, so we haven't got to that item on the agenda, I don't think, oh, but, yeah, but I don't so, know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, oops, wait. wait. Um, we would ask the, that when you hold that until we get into the business section, Lowell, would you mind holding until we get into the business I can. section? Okay. No. No. It's an hour. Well, could be. Whatever. So um, one of the takeaways here is, you know, is, is you've, you've heard about elderly housing, and I don't know how, um, uh, you know, how the, your application can be structured or whatever. Uh, we, I think we actually just came out of a meeting where. Um, we talked about doing a survey of folks on the waiting list and in the existing senior housing to ask them about what um, types of design amenities are important to them. Um, we've already um, determined that that building will um, be a single building so we can have an elevator. Um, you know, and then there are other features um, like a roll-in shower and, and things like that. So we we know that we want to house those people as well. So we're, we've already started that process. We're in just schematic design of the building, but making sure that this building can serve as many of those folks that are on, on the waiting list for the senior housing as possible through, through the design of the building. But just to be clear, this would be a multi-generational building. And right, it won't be age restricted, right. but it could Is it be. gonna be the, can you tell us the proportion? Um, how much senior, how much? So within, um, so actually I'll back up a little. The, the reason, well there's a couple, the reasons are sort of twofold why we're going unage restricted. One, Rennie kind of alluded to, there really is still, um, in our market studies, we're still finding a lot of family housing demand in addition to the senior demand. And then secondly, um, the way that the, so the largest source of equity for this project will be the low income housing tax credits, which are allocated by the Vermont Housing Finance Agency. And the way that they allocate tax credits makes it, they, they restrict the amount of money that they'll get dole out for senior projects. And it just makes it very, very hard to get that funding for an age restricted project right now. The way that our Marine Lane was done, we had access to what are called HUD 202 funds, which are specifically for senior housing. What has since happened, that, that provides capital and operating subsidy for the property, and what's happened with that program is it still exists, but it's been either level funded or cut so that they can continue to fund the operating subsidies that are already in existence, like the ones at Armory Lane, but they aren't providing any new money to build new senior housing with that program. Um, so it was a combination of what funding is available to us and where the demand is. But like Samantha said, when we're having these design meetings, we really want to make sure that we can serve those folks on the Armory, wait, Armory Lane wait list. It is our longest wait list. So we don't have final proportions for what the, we, we can't restrict the proportion. We can't to restrict see, units to right. age. <laughs> but in terms of what the, um, the, the like bedroom size mix will be. We don't have the final numbers, but we're looking at um, predominantly one bedrooms, next a uh, number of two bedrooms, and maybe one three bedroom unit. Um, so to those smaller households, looking at those features that are attractive to folks on the Armory Lane waitlist and to the folks who already live in senior housing. So 
um, you know, a number of uh, ADA accessible units, even some of the one bedrooms or even two bedrooms that aren't ADA accessible will have features like the roll-in showers. They'll actually all be fully adaptable so that if somebody is in a unit that, um, for example, isn't an, an ADA unit but they need grab bars, the blocking will already be in there in the showers. So just making it very friendly for serving that whole spectrum of, of populations and then we hope to with the availability of SASH right across the street that it'll draw some people in that way too. Are you forced to have a certain number of three bedrooms? No. No. We just have very, very few in our portfolio currently. Um, we, we manage about 240 units, about 100 of those are here in Virgins. Um And I don't know that, oh, two, well, no, those are, well, technically those are in Waltham. We've got two three bedrooms at McKnight Lane and I'm trying to think of other three bedrooms in Virgins. I know where they are in Middlebury and Bristol, but I actually don't even think we have, I won't swear to it, but fewer than what you can count on one hand in terms of three bedrooms we have. So. You know, when the, when the senior housing project was was finally built and the 25 units, I, I, I think that I emailed Matt Moore at Housing Vermont every six months and <laughs> called, called Terry McKnight every every month to say, okay, you got the 25, let's, let's go with another 25, because in my mind, you know, a senior housing of 25 units and then 25 more and maybe 25 more, and because people literally die on the list, all right? So one of the, why I was asking about the, the three bedroom is that really, I know that the rents are different, whether or not it's a one bedroom or a two bedroom or a three bedroom. And uh, senior, a senior, there has to be some reason for them. So my, my point is, is that if you've got this list, uh, you know, my, I would suggest that you build to that list. And that's about as good as we can right. get. Because I, I understand that. We do have some folks who need a three bedroom on our other list, okay. waiting for housing in Virgins, yeah. not on the armory list. Okay. So. All righty. Any other discussion that needs to have? I think we're, we know where this is. One question for Mel. Is sure. there a way that if this goes forward, we can somehow incorporate? language that will clarify issues that will not go to appeal again. <laughs> so that we know, both sides know exactly what's going to be looked at and how it's going to be counted and that that is crystal clear from the get-go. Well, well, first off, uh, the, the entity that appealed has a different management than, than housing. I realize, I just need, bank. just so that... Uh, uh, you know, I they were looking at one formula. We thought the formula should be a different one. Yeah. And so there were yeah, I mean, two, I, two meetings of, or two minds trying to meet. And it would be nice before this even starts. Like, this is it. Do we agree? Yes, we agree. Okay, that's we our definition. We probably already agree, though. I, I, don't, you know, it's, I, I don't know that we've recalculated the senior housing since the first calculation, to be honest with you. I don't think there's been that exchange. In theory, the way the statute reads, you calculate it every, you calculate it every year. And it, and it goes like this. Some towns say, "Listen, let's just hit a number and, and run with it." But the statute begs begs you to, to you know, run the calculation. What you're talking about is the reserve fund, and I I, I, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know how you know, I, I I know where you're getting at. You're you're trying to drive that point home. Well, just before, so that before we do that, that everybody we knows that, we need to get back on point here because we're starting to. Talk more about semantics and that, and that is a, a, a different subject altogether. Uh, and rather than, rather than belabor this, if it's an issue that needs to come in front of the council, that should be put on the agenda in, in itself. So rather than try to solve a problem that you know, we can't at this point, uh, let's let's move on to. Uh, uh, if, if anybody else has any questions, uh, please direct them, and uh, we'll try to keep, keep moving here. If none, ladies, thank you very much for coming. If you want to hang around for a few seconds, we have some other yep. business that we need to attend to, but we'll be right up in just a few seconds. Uh, ask for a motion for a minute. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Okay. Second. Okay. Lowell made a motion. Ready made the second. Uh, any omissions, corrections, or errors? Hearing none, all of them. Oops. Oops.
Jeff, now you have a chance. Now I have one or two. Yep. Uh, page one <coughs> under warrant. Second line, Alderman Chabot recommended that members conduct their due diligence rather than its due diligence. That was all I had. Okay, ready? Okay, if you go to page two, quite a few lines down. Um, it's a sentence that starts with, one needs to consider that under this plan, all vehicles would be required to drive south on this, it says portion, but it seems, oh, yeah, say it portion, <laughs> portion of, of North Street. Portion. <laughs> and the other, only other place that I have a change is on the very last page under comments, and just need to change it up a little bit. Uh, the comments say, Senior Alderman Perry uh, reported uh, Virgen's partnership is sponsoring the first Eat on the Green event. And I'd like to change that because even though everybody th thought we were the sponsor, it really, we weren't really, even though we were the physical agent and, and much of the planner, but we're not the sponsor. So it probably should read, Senior Alderman Perry reported the, that the first Eat on the Green, striking Virgen's partnership is sponsoring put that in there instead, <clears throat> that the first Eat on the Green event is is on or will be either either one. Okay. Um, and that would be it. That would clarify. Because the four the four profits are down below there, right? Right. What's that? The four non profits are listed below. Yes, they're listed, yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, any other corrections or errors? If not, all those in favor as uh, the corrections were made, say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. <clears throat> and now to citizens' comments. Are there anyone in the uh, audience that want to make some uh, comments on items that are not on the agenda? And for those that don't know what is on the agenda, community development block grant resolution. A, number B, donation to Front Porch Forum. C, is uh, donations to Green Up Vermont. D, uh, select to a green, green Up Day Coordinator. Thank you, Lowell. Um, <laughs> D, local option tax. F, sewer rate increase. And uh, F1, uh, private sewer connections. G, sandwich boards and temporary signs. Uh, and six is city manager report. He's going to do the 2018 budget report, reserving dock space, uh, traffic study, municipal planning grant, other topics of interest. Um, and the stuff that I have is uh, truck traffic through Regens, and that's about a meeting we had today, and pumpkins in the park, and the next meeting date in the course of journey. So, any, anybody uh, else? Yes. I just uh, came tonight because I did notice that no update on the pool caulking was on, and I'm just curious if we have any further information about that. Um, we'll entertain that question right here, right now. Bill, have you heard it? Sure. The, I, I do not have anything to put in front of the City Council tonight, but I, had, I did meet with Mike from Pease Construction Services last week, and they have totally inspected, taken pictures of the entire pool, all of the cracks, and he needed to report that back to his boss so that we could get a, a quote from them. Uh, NICOM is the other company that I've been in touch with. They have not gone to the pool yet. They are swamped with work. NICOM is the company that recently did the repairs to both end, uh, ends of the bridge. So. I, uh, I do not have numbers for you. I would love to be able to bring you numbers uh, ASAP so that this work can be done in this season because we are going to run out of this weather here rather quickly. So the, there is no good answer to your question, but an update. Is that, do you have any other comments, Michelle? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Can I um, follow up? I, um, I'm Sarah Stroff. I live across the street. Um, 
I have been unable to come to the city council meeting since June, but um, I've been looking at the minutes and seeing some comments about kind of low citizen participation and attendance at city council meetings. And I'll be frank, I I think it's having come to city council meetings and tried to trying to speak up on things like investing in the pool and then not hearing like my concerns are being heard is frustrating. It it seems to dishonor the major volunteer effort that a lot of people in our community have put into the pool. So I know I, I'm sympathetic that you all are often told that you never move fast enough for the citizens in your community. I, I know that this stuff takes time. Um, but in terms of investing and caulking the expansion joints and uh, putting a line, line item uh, in the general budget, it I feel like coming to city council meetings over the past five or six months, I've heard um, claims that those things will be done. And I, I would just like to respectfully ask that they are done, um, that our city council protect this existing recreational facility that we have um, by committing funds to something that many of our community members have committed time to. Thank you for your comments. Can I say, I'm sorry. Sure, you may. But totally separate and much more um, optimistic, I would say, which is um, I wanted to thank the members of our community and particularly Joan Devine um, uh, for responding to some of my concerns. Um, the event on the city green, uh, Eat on the Green, the other night was really wonderful, um, but a friend of mine who does not live in Virgins um, her, had an, uh, an incident where her nine-year-old daughter <clears throat> was attacked by a dog on the green and was taken to Porter in an ambulance and uh, she is okay but will be scarred on her face um, and it was a very scary incident. Um, thank you Joan for answering my many questions that I had after that incident. Um, I'm grateful that we do have um, military, per uh, military medical personnel there to deal with those sorts of things um, and that uh, Joan and, and you all know kind of the rules about this. I will ask um, that, I, I, I don't know if the City Council can do anything about this um, legally, but if we can encourage members of our community to leave their pets at home during big events like the Memorial Day Parade, the Eat on the Green event, um, the Virgin's Day, that's a very small space that's very busy and um, quite stressful, uh, even for almost 40 year old adults chasing after their children. Um, so if it's possible to encourage uh, members of our community to not bring their pets into a very stressful environment, um, I, I, it might make accidents like that less likely in the future. Thank you. Can I, can I, yes. I'm going to work backwards here because I want to get back to the pool. Uh, so first off, relative to dogs in a park, you know, it really deals with our city ordinance. Our ordinance currently, you know, we do not ban dogs from the city green. However, it would be my opinion that when the city, uh, like under our city green policy, Joan, I, I, I think you might agree with me, when somebody reserves the park, mm -hmm. all right, for an event, that entity, we, they would make their own rules about right. whether or not they would allow dogs or whatever. We, we, wouldn't we wouldn't necessarily micromanage that aspect. However, if, if, the, if the city green policy that the city council adopted said that during events, no dot, I mean, the, so the city council can be in control of that through the city green use policy, or we're not in control and it's left with whoever uh, the entity is that has reserved the park, all right, for that? Swimming pool. Uh, uh, at, at one of the meetings, I'm glad you read these. I'm glad you read these minutes. You have no idea how much time Joan and I spend on these on these minutes. Uh, so I'm glad you're reading them. Uh, so one of the things that's nice about the pool is uh, either the last meeting or the meeting before, I gave an updated report on the on the pool budget, and it was the first time as long as the city's owned the pool, which is 2010, that we ended the year with you know fourteen thousand dollar surplus so that's a that's a nice thing uh, so that's fine relative to and and we're getting these quotes I will tell you tell you um, uh, 
uh, that, um, as I know Michelle knows, I don't know how, how much you know, Sarah, but one of the things that we've, we ran into this year is that the fabric that covers the panels, the discs in the, uh, uh, in the filter, that those fabric covers over the plastic discs showed evidence of failure this year, and that's why there was a lot of DE that accumulated in the deep end. Um, and so it's crystal clear that the, those fabric covers are uh, beyond their life, and Rick is procuring uh, replacement fabric covers, or there's whatever, 30 bucks a piece, or I don't know how many discs there are, Michelle, I don't know. 64. 54, thank you. Six, 64. 64 discs times, you do the math, okay, so we got a couple thousand dollars worth, and Rick is actually going to take all of that apart this fall, bring it down to the treatment plant, put it by the fabrics, and in their downtime, they'll put that fabric on, so next year, there will be, uh, there will be a new fabric on there, so that $2,000, uh, you know, I don't really feel like the $14,000 is mine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna report to the city council some of the things that were, some of the things that we're working on, and I, I really think that this caulking is not a $2,000 item. I think yeah. it's, I gotta come to the city council with this one. Uh, relative to allocating from the general fund, we, we do budgets in uh, May, so we, we won't be. There was maybe you. Heard they talked about that, but we allocate money from the watershed fund. There currently is no allocation from the uh, from the general fund, if you will, and that's it's, that's a budget decision that the city council makes at the time that they're adopting the budget in May and June. So, anyway, okay. just go ahead. Yeah, just a quick one on the <clears throat> dogs in the park. Um, having been integrally involved in the planning of that event. Um, I didn't see the particular person who was bringing actually rescue dogs in to kind of uh, promote rescuing dogs. Uh, I didn't see that person there. Uh, had I saw them, I, I may have mentioned something to them and taken a risk that, I, that we actually had the authority to say, you shouldn't be here, you didn't ask us for permission. Um, so. Um, uh, after that, I talked with Mel because I wanted to find out, well, you know, what can we do if, if we've got the park and we're doing this event, is there any way that we can control this? Because had I seen it or somebody else seen it, we probably would have said, you don't belong here. Um, and Mel said just what he just said is that once the, the, you have that event that you have control of the park, and so with that in mind, when we have our critique meeting uh, next week about uh, how we do this event next year, um, then we'll know that we'll be able to control those kinds of things. It, it, it certainly will be difficult to try and control not having people just come in with their dog. Uh, but we can certainly control people who might be doing something for rescue dogs or, or something else that shouldn't be there because of either the safety issue or some other issue. Um, so it's good to know that we will be doing something about controlling that. And I, I do know on Virgin's Day, there's uh, the kennel that brings in a bunch of dogs just so that the kids can get used to them and, and, they're, and the dogs are all proper tempered and can be manhandled. Uh, didn't know any restrictions and uh, as well as my granddaughter brought her dog and that dog will lick you to death. <clears throat> that's the only harm we'll ever do to you. But, you know, I mean, it's unfortunate. And Abigail works at the kennel, and she was named <coughs> this dog off by name and introducing the owners. And so it's, uh, there's some pros and cons to those sort of things, so it's, it's, it's a hard call. Yeah, I'm just I, okay. I have two rescue dogs. I support the endeavors of um, those foster parents. I just um, think that those particular days in that small space are, mm -hmm. are pretty stressful. Yep. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Hearing none, um, then we're going to go right into uh, business and the community development block, block grant. Then you need to report, repeat that uh, idea, or did, Joan, did you get the I wrote it down. You had the motion? Yep. Thank you, ladies. Um, and you got the second? Any, yep. further, <clears throat> any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. That is carried. Okay, we're going to move right on to donations to Front Porch Forum. Thank you, ladies. Have a good evening. Thanks. And we'll see you on November 2nd. Okay, Joan, are you the instigator on this one? Well, yes. I, I get it in my um, front porch form um, soliciting anyone who uses it, requesting a donation to help support that availability. And I use it quite a bit, front porch forum, and I think $100 is pretty minimal. Anything coming up, like when we have traffic, a traffic problem, I'll go out there, or a special meeting for something with the council, or don't forget to register your dogs. I mean, all things, if you had put an ad in the Addison Independent, people aren't going to read that like they read Front Porch Forum or Facebook. I also load stuff on our page on Facebook. But I would like to support um, Front Porch Forum just so that it doesn't go away. I think it's a good tool for us. Yeah, I too use it for updates on Vermont Gas um, yep. and, and yep. other announcements. Yep. So I mean, it's, it's a well worth uh, investment. So, so they uh, <clears throat> They don't require that you pay in order to post so, so many no, times. No, not no. for not for government government no, because nothing. for the for the partnership because we use Even it quite often. We have to, we have to actually pay right uh, for so many times that we can post. Yeah, but, like you're allowed six free and nothing yeah. over. You got to start paying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I don't have that limitation. Andy, just a comment. They they accept ads. Is that correct? Yes. I think so. Mm -hmm. so Those have to be paid. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. yeah, they say they are for profit, for profit business. For profit corporation yes. Business yes. That accepts ads. Yeah. Uh, it's just curious. I find that a for profit venture is asking for donations. <laughs> yeah. But do well, get in my email. <coughs> They're just. So, and you know, newspaper websites could probably also be. <laughs> yep. So, so do we need a motion? We want to donate to us. We, 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 we don't feel that Joan and I don't feel that we have the authority to, to write checks to, to for really non-government. Uh, you know, I mean, we have a line item in our in the sewer department now for the River Watch program. We that that we probably would do, but I think we have given front porch. We yeah, we've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, is that what you want to do? So, um, I'll make the motion that we um, donate uh, $100 to Front Porch Forum. I have a motion. Do I have a second? second. Mole seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor? One question. Aye. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. John, do we have the ability to post uh, the upcoming agenda prior to a city council meeting, like a link to our agenda? On front porch forum? Yeah. yeah. Is that something we would consider doing? Yeah, we could dig on another <laughs> item to try and remember to do. Yeah. Is, it a, is it actually a link? Yeah, you can create a link okay. so that a link appears to someone only has to click on it rather than say go to for Jen. So, let, okay, right. so let me, let me, let me, so. Let me just tell you how the system works here, okay? So I, I write the agenda for this meeting. I write the agenda sometime on Friday. I send it out to Mike, all right? Mike says, yeah, that's good, or move this around, or whatever. Send it back, but good. So the, the agenda is done. Yeah, I post that on the city's website, all right? You know, either that day or Saturday morning. I have to post it within 48 hours of the meeting and also post paper copies in, in three public places, okay? so. The, the link that you're referring to, all right, mm -hmm. is, uh, I mean, I, I certainly know how to use Front Porch Forum, but, uh, you know, let us try this, okay? It's just like it's one more thing that we need to remember that has to be done on Friday before we leave, okay? Yeah. Now that link, Joan is going to send that to Front Porch Forum, 
that yeah. link. I'm going to give her the link. Right. I mean, she can figure out the link, okay? And I would assume that would be published front porch form is the next day, two days, well, within hours. Okay. Okay. That, right. That's what I'm. That's what. But I'm, it so, should be within a day. So we jobs. will try to remember to do this because I'm just Friday. kind of curious about you know make sure that it's just simple. All right, if it's just a matter of you know, uh, you know we'll we'll give it a whirl. But I just want to tell you we 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 do this. You know, I mean it's just the way that we do things. I'm a last minute guy. I'm a okay. There's not some value to oh, absolutely. providing the information right. to our community prior yeah. to a, a meeting. Yeah, and and all I'm and basically like if depending if it pops right out there, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, Mike and I, we could try to put the agenda together on Thursday so that it's you know out there. We could try it, but I but generally we're you, you usually have to post by like about. 3.30, 4 o'clock at the latest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. about 5.30, yeah. And, and, and it usually comes out, some days it comes out at 4.30, some days it comes, comes out at 5.30, depending on how busy it is. But it's, it's, all, it's yeah. all good. Let's give it a try. Sure. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and people have been told many times, by people at home, uh, that it's available on the website. They just have to go searching for it. Yeah. It's already there. So, all right. So, uh, we have a motion and a second. Did we already pass that one? Yeah, no. we did. We did. <laughs> no. we, have we have a vote. We have a vote. All those yeah. yeah. in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So, the ayes have it. Donation to Green Up Vermont. We've always done that in the past. I'll um, make a motion to donate $150. How appropriate that you make the motion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. I'll second the motion. No conflict. I might not make the next one. I'm going to yeah. the next one. <laughs> the oh. uh, okay, I'm going to take Lowell's motion and uh, Matt's as a second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, right. Hey, did that move pass? Uh, section, selection of Green Up co Coordinator. Did I have a volunteer named Lowell? I move low. Yeah. Second. <laughs> uh, I third. I third low. <laughs> Call the question. Will you do it, Lowell? Sure. Uh, I will try to assist you again this year. Second. One of us. Matt. Matt was third, I think. Yeah. yeah. Mark, <laughs> Mark was third. <laughs> so I guess John. Mark was second. Mark was second. I need to oh, I want to make sure. Is, is, is it the same pay? As last year, yeah, it's gone up. <laughs> double. Okay. I, think I wouldn't mind if double the pay double. Mark said. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Zero does. <laughs> All those Zero in favor two. of the motion of Lowell being Green Up coordinator, say aye. 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 Opposed? Be quiet. So okay. carried. Thank you, Lowell. Thank you. Thank you. Local option tax. All right. I'm just going to talk about one other little thing that kind of fell off the the uh, agenda this time because it's going to be dealt with in a different manner is the downtown basin master plan it calls for things to be done where is the money coming from that's the hard part it's not budgeted anywhere so here is an opportunity with if we were to consider a local option tax to use those funds for specific projects so that we didn't have to go out and start hitting taxes, but raising people's taxes. That's one thought process, people. I mean, there are other reasons. There are some pros and cons. I've heard some discussion uh, that it, it raises uh, something about, it raises something on our electric light bill, and I didn't see it does. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you pay sales tax on your, on your light bill, okay. sure. Fuel. Hmm? And fuel. home yeah. fuel. So, I mean, it, it does have some sh shortfalls, and, but there's some dif different options, right, Mel, as to how you approach this? Well, th what it is, uh, you know, they're, the way that the law reads is a municipality, you know, you know, it requires voter approval and it requires a charter. You have to go, you have to, go to the legislature to get it approved. So it's not like you, you adopt this and it starts in a, in a week. But there, there are options that it can be uh, sales and use or room and meals or both and the percentage can be up to one percent and uh, you know there's some spread you know there are some spreadsheets some communities have there's not a lot of communities that have done this I want to say 
25, and some of them is only room and meals, some of them are only use, and, but the lion's share of them are, are, are both. Colchester was the most recent town to um, adopt a, um, a local option tax, and I don't, I don't know if it's sales and use and, and room and meals. We studied this back a number of, uh, a number of years ago, I think after the, the community visit, and in my mind, I think that it generated uh, net of about a hundred thousand dollars is what it, what it was, but it was you know hit with some objection um, because it does it's you know a lot of people think that you know sales and use tax well that's not gonna that's not gonna that's not me I don't I don't buy anything okay well it's not just what you you know, go to the store and buy. It's it's really a lot of things like your telephone bill. Your te you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, other purchases uh, that you make that become applicable to that. And uh, so, you know, uh, but I, I you know, it's it's something the number of communities have have done, and and it is a. Uh, either new money, like in the case of Middlebury, their their local option tax is absolutely dedicated to paying for that bridge bond, and maybe there's been some discussion lately, Andy, of uh, maybe using it for other because I think it's generating more than they need for the bridge, and there's so some discussion. there's been some discussion about that. So, ready? Yeah. Um, yes, we have actually. Uh, discussed this several times. Um, the first time was when I was manager um, and was brought up, but at that time it really went down in flames fast because we weren't surrounded by communities that already had it. We were going to be one of the first and the businesses felt that that would be a, a disadvantage to them, so it went by the wayside. Now, of course, we're basically surrounded by other communities that that uh, have the local option tax, so it's not it's not as shocking. Um, the uh, the last time that we studied this, and we did quite a bit of study on this, got all the regulations, we got from the tax department an estimate of how much money we would possibly earn, and so on. And what killed it at that time is that uh, we spoke to several of our major industries, and one of our major industries would be. Uh, financially, high, fairly high amount of money financially impacted neg negatively. Um, and so because of that, uh, we, it kind of just fell by the wayside, that we weren't going to pursue it because it, it would be too much impact and we don't wanna, didn't want to risk the, the thought that uh, one of those industries might close or go someplace else. Now, I don't know whether that would be the situation now. I mean, I, th I think it probably deserves some uh, a, a look at again to see whether um, that industry and other industries will, uh, will be impacted negatively by it um, and see, you know, it's maybe like good wine, only before it's time, you know, no, never before it's time. So um, uh, maybe we should look at it again. Yeah, we don't want to do anything uh, right up front. We do not want to do anything that's going to drive any uh, businesses out of town. That's not the intent of this whole process. It's just that <clears throat> as, as a taxpayer, if we keep adding too many taxes and all these projects that need to, that we'd like to get done, and it's, they're not happening this year or in a, another year, but I mean, it's it's just spread it over a period of time, and if you can start chunking off the the pool right now needs a, a, a new roof, uh, that and I think once uh, Mark took a, a tour on the roof to see how it was, and got one point where he thought he was going to go through, and so um, he I stopped touring. <laughs> he said, I've had enough fun. I'm getting down here from here. So um, there's just there's things like that that we haven't budgeted, and reality is going to take him kick us right straight in the butt here pretty quick because uh, there's some big big ticketed items that need to be addressed and didn't know if this might be an opportunity to, you know, at least get some feelers out there. So I'm kind of looking uh, to the council for guidance. Is this something we want to at least consider and, and have some conversations with, uh, you know, like country home products um, and uh, UTC, you know, 
the AI technology and if there's uh, some other ones uh, in the area that you feel that we, we should have some conversations with. So, somebody want to share some thoughts on that, please? Got a question and a comment. We need to get voter approval and we need to get legislative approval, right? Correct. Is the legislative approval for a specific tax that we want to run or just that we would be chartered to allow a sales option tax at all? It's like we're allowing, we're getting permission that would go on forever whether we use it or not and it's a one-time thing or are you going to the legislature to ask for a specific thing to go into effect? I think I, I don't know that answer, but I believe that you would you would you would it would be enabling legislation to have room and you know if you I think you've got to be specific about whether or not it's sales and room and tax room and meals uh, uh, and the percentage. I think you need to be I think you need to be that specific. Um, you're, you're wondering about. I'm just wondering if we have it if this is a tool that we might use someday and we would just have it in our back pocket and that way we'd only have one step yep. after that or whether it's always a two-step process where you have to get voter approval and then go to the legislature and say this is what the voters have approved do you approve also okay or, so yeah I don't know I could uh, I would you know I would just reach out to Colchester and take a look at their you know I'd call up Don and say give me my give me the information and see you know what they put in front of the voters and and I know they had to go to the legislature. And the reason why, you know, I, I know at the legislature, Colchester, the legislature started to say that they would only get they would only get 60 percent of the uh, of the proceeds and not 70. I mean, and because it's whatever the legislature ends up uh, approving. Um, so you're you're wondering if this is something that we can, in essence, turn on and off. Yeah, if there's a way just to say, do we, will you allow this municipality to yep. have this option? And the okay. legislature says, sure, and then yeah. it's just there. We may never use it, but it's there, and it's one less thing to have to go forward and go through a hoop. Or it might be, no, you need voter approval, and then you tell us what the project is, and then we'll consider it. And I don't know which, which way it is for the, the legislation approval. Okay, yeah. Uh, so you're, you're not talking about... I think in the case of Middlebury, their bridge project, that is very specific. That's the ch charter, that's what the money goes into a reserve fund right. to pay them. I mean, it's really bound right up. I'm just meaning what the legislative, what, what is their approval actually? Are they approving the project that you're funding or are they approving the ability for your municipality to have this type of tax? I think it's the latter. Yeah. I don't think the legislature so, necessarily so cares. even if we had nothing planned, could we go before the legislature yeah. and say, we would like this option yeah. that we may or may never use? Right, right. That might be a, something to do just so that we have it, even if we... Yeah, because some tax, because I can tell you, I, I think that Middle, Middlebury is really an exception to the rule that, uh, that, that their proceeds go specifically towards a project. I think typically it's used just to strictly... Uh, Offset property taxes it just goes right. It's a line item in the, you know, in their general fund, and it's not project specific. And, and that might be another consideration if, if this, depending on how it was designed and built, is you know, if, if a specific project such as the roof got done, you had reserve funds that there either be a method of how people apply or groups apply for special projects or it defers automatically if not being spent uh, against something directly to the tax base. I don't, I don't know much about how the, all the projects, I was under the impression that actually most of them were project based. I don't think so. And that's how you got involvement is, you know, the bridge especially I know about, but this is what we want, it is going to cost this much money, it's going to take this much time do you approve it as opposed to we would like to take some money from you and use it for things <laughs> yeah which is a lot harder to get the voters behind yeah, yeah. yeah. it um, <clears throat> I think Mel is correct probably more of them use it for, to offset property taxes um, I, I think it would be more prudent if we did it is to be more project specific which which actually indirectly offsets property taxes 
because if you say, you know, look, we've got all these sidewalks that we've got to repair. Well, let's, let, let's put that money towards doing sidewalks. Well, you know, we know we're going to have to do the sidewalks. It would be otherwise coming out of tax money. It doesn't come out of tax money. So it's, it's kind of offsetting tax it's, 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 it's indirectly taxes. offsetting tax money anyhow, even if you use it for a project, unless it's a project that is really a kind of a wild and unusual kind of a project. Um, you know, you you could be use it for recreation areas. You could for, use, for, use it for dog parks. Yeah, you, you could use, use it for, for all those things which you we we might end up doing at some point. But it would be all tax money, and, and instead it's that money. So, so it uh, it could be really useful. But I I would certainly recommend that it be more pro project specific. It's too bad when we had money coming from uh, Job Corps that that was more wasn't more project specific because it really slammed us when we didn't get the money anymore. <laughs> I, I, I do believe that it is a it has to be in your charter so like if, you know you do have to go through a charter change to have to have that so I mean obviously all of the char charters are online we could find out what the you know, they're pretty easy to find out what what the language is in their charter you could also find out what the voters voted on and you cannot assume that what's in their charter is exactly what they voted on because it goes to the it goes to the legislature. Well, we can we can certainly gather that so, if that's what the council wants so to see some other language. Consensus. Uh, let's try to do some research and, and move see where we move from here. Not necessarily we're gonna try to move forward but not giving a specific direction. So I think we need to get our fuels out to the you know, business leaders in our community and see if there's going to be the same amount of pushback that there was initially. I understand the culture or the climate outside of Regents has changed, which may make it more favorable now mm -hmm. than it was at the first pass. Mm -hmm. I would so, you know, the, you know, the, there is a, di there is a big difference to me between the two different types of taxes. For instance, room and meals is going to hit all, you know, all of the restaurants are going to charge that and the bed and breakfasts are going to charge that. All right. No one else is going to be paying that that fee. All right. Sales and use is going to be at all of us right. in the in the community mm -hmm. and the restaurants. And <laughs> again, so uh, you know, to me, there's a there. You know, they it is only. I would assume it would be only one question from the voters, but your but your clients, if you will, are are very different. So I think to you know to me. You'd want to talk to the restaurant people and see how they feel about it, because the restaurant people might feel absolutely. We want, you know, it's going into. I don't know what their reaction is going to be. That's a that's a very small set compared to the uh, the sales and use is everybody. So, well, if you say it's if you choose both, then are restaurants and, and housing or uh, hotels getting hit twice? Then no, but no. They don't get hit. Well, they get, well, you know, they get hit. They're on their, you know, the the tax on rooms, rooms and meals is one percent. Mm -hmm. All right, and then on their on their any sales or any purchases that they make would be subject to the one percent sales and use. So it's not like it's not like two. It's not like it's two percent on the room. Right. They're, they're two totally separate. Uh, it's one percent on the room and. 1% on the book that they sold. But if you, if you choose one of them, they get hit with one of the 1%. So if you choose the other, they get hit with the other 1%. Not they really, because both, the, user, get, the user's yeah. paying the tax. Right. Right. But they not, had to up their the rates, rates, so they might not have as many. Why would, so have have hmm? Why would they have to up their rates? Why would they have to up their rates? It's well, a tax that the user is paying. Doesn't that change what the final bill is on, on the your, room and meals they, they don't have to up their rates on sales and use you do because that is that's they don't pay the, the sales and use like for instance the the inn that's paying their green mountain power bill they're paying that paying themselves right. right that's not right. a client's not paying that uh, right the client's paying for the room right that one percent there so let me just ask this so if you bought a car or you bought a house or you bought some major purchase it's not Four dollars. So house that's house a is, sale. A house is not subject to sales and use tax. A house is a house is subject to property transfer tax. A car is is not sales and use. That's a different tax. You know, 
So, so those kind of things are not considered a sales tax. It's not. No. Okay. no. We did the last time we did this, which was which wasn't all that long ago. Yeah. Um, the um, we did run numbers on potentially what people would have to pay. It, the one percent really, truly, is minuscule. Right. No one, uh, unless you told them it was there, you wouldn't even notice it, really. But you know, there's psychological things that go on when when you when you're when you, raising when you talk a about tax. Taxes. You know? Everybody's yeah. ears perk up. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you have to get voter permission, then you kind of have to tell them. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you have to no, you have to tell them that. But but what I'm saying is that part of uh, what we studied the last time was well, if we're going to take us to the voters. We, we need to tell them how it affects them. So we had to run these numbers of, you know, how it would affect them, and it's really minuscule. Mark, are you in favor of kind of re doing some more additional research? Yeah, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I no, just, no, I'm just trying to figure out, get the feeling, if anybody's really against trying to move this in, in any direction, I think they hear it now so that we just don't go off on a witch hunt or anything. Ms. Lynn. I don't have any problem with studying it. Yeah, because yeah, that, that it's, it talks to somebody. Jeff? I'd like more information. Lowell? Same. Okay. Uh, Mel, can I give me some hints as to what would be the next step? And we don't have to do that right now. No. And, and maybe one or two of us if, could go uh, and talk to some of the businesses and, and uh, get a feel, but we ought to, so we don't double up on anybody. We ought to know who's going where uh, if somebody's going to talk to somebody in particular. Uh, so, okay, so we're going to get off that point because I know Mel's got some stuff here that we got to deal with. Um, enough said on that. Uh, sewer rate increase. Mel. So I handed out uh, at the meeting two pieces of paper, one being uh, uh, a sheet that looks like what you normally see for the budget. And, and let me just tell you that this next year budget, um, all that I did, I did not deal with employee salaries. Uh, I didn't really do with a heck, of, a heck of a lot with anything other than some of the areas in the budget that we, that we, to me, are are not funding properly under the current budget, and that is sewer line replacement. I can tell you, I should have brought my fund eight, my fund eight to you, but. One of the areas of, uh, of getting rid of this infiltration is to continue to replace clay tile lines. And I can tell you that as of today, we only have about $38,000 in that fund. And really, that it just doesn't go very far. So you'll notice under sewer line replacement, to uh, increase that from $20,000 to $50,000, what I'm talking about is next fiscal year. Uh, I will tell you that we currently have $68,000 in the capital improvement fund and we have not been putting any money in there. Uh, all of our sewer connection fees go into that pot. Uh, we are in the process of replacing the furnace, but we don't have anything uh, else planned. Uh, but you know, if, a, if we have to replace a pump, we would be using that a portion of that $68,000 fund. We have... Um, the last payment of the bond, I included that in your agenda packet, is November 1, 2022. So we've got, uh, we've just got a few years left here, five more years to, to pay. And, uh, you know, I, you could, you know, you could put money into the capital improvement fund, uh, but, you know, the other option is just to wait until that bond is paid off and then begin really putting money into that fund. The, on, the revenue, on the revenue side, uh, in the center column, you'll notice that the revenues, projected revenue of $652,000, and there was another, the second sheet Joan put together uh, there, just so you know, you know, lots of times when I say Joan, you know, she'll say like, can you, can I, you want me to put a spreadsheet together? And I say, yeah, good idea, put a spreadsheet together. And I apologize this for her. 
she and I live in this world of books, and so like Joan and I know what we're talking about about book, and he's saying the city council doesn't know what's book one book. What does book have to do with this? So let me explain what this means. <laughs> book two, <laughs> book two, is our measured users. So this is how we bill sewer. We have, uh, I'm going to say. We send out 700 bills that are on an equivalent user basis. So everybody in the room here that owns a house, they get a bill every quarter for $96. That's your flat rate bill, 96 bucks. If you have a three family dwelling, then it's three times 96, that's your bill. If you have an office building with two offices in it, and you don't use very much water, it's two units, 96 bucks per unit. We also have a book, book who is the measured users and what that is is that any commercial the way the ordinance is written is any commercial uh, unit that we expect will use more than 6,000 gallons per month of water is billed sewer on the measured user basis and so uh, every month uh, Maria at the uh, water district sends Joan and I a predetermined list. We studied this a number of years ago. You know, if you have like a office, you don't like Lynn, your office, you don't use squat for water down there. Okay, but if you're a, if you were the car wash, all right. Now we're talking about some water. So we analyzed all of the commercial units a long time ago, Joan, and and uh, when I first came back to work here, I think is what I, what I when I first came back to work in 2008, we analyzed all these commercial units and located all of those units that have a history of, of using more than 6,000 gallons per month. And the city council amended the ordinance whereby sewer is charged for commercial use, users with a history of using more than 6,000 gallons of water per month or billed on the measured user basis. On top of that, Northlands Job Corps and uh, UTC is build by taking a look at their metered sewer, comparing that to the water, and if they use more, if there's more sewer flow based on what goes through UTC's sewer monitoring metering vault, or in the case of Northlands, the, the Northlands Job, uh, the, the Job Corps pump station, we're able to, to compare actual sewer flow against water usage and in the case of Northlands half of the time be due to rain and snow melt there's more flow that they put into the system than they use in water from the Virgins Pant Water District and the way that the ordinance is written they pay the higher of the two amounts and so that's why when you see book two you see that that you see how book one is very stable, you know, $120,000, that's then a little bit more, that's, you know, Peter Kahn built two houses, that's why you see, a, you know, you don't see a heck of a lot of movement there, but you do see some volatility in book two, and that's because of what I just explained, that, you know, the seasonality of the car wash, all right, you know, uh, you know can move those numbers. I can tell you just by looking at that report, I can guarantee you that September was one wet September. That's predominantly uh, <coughs> Northlands Job Corps is uh, the result of that. So anyway, so the point is, is that we are only billing out $652,000 a year against the current budget of 680200 which uh, would push us into an $18,000 deficit. We ended FY17 with about $10,000 in the fund balance. And so if we do nothing with the rates, we would project to end the year $8,000 in the hole. So one option is to do nothing uh, and push the problem out to budget time and deal with the rates then. Another option is to deal with it tonight uh, to increase rates. Joan is going to be doing her billing on the, to, yeah, the, by the 16th of October, so she'll probably do it based on uh, regardless of whether you do nothing with the rate or change the rate, she's got to do billing. So I can tell you that the $720,000 is what we would 
uh, what, that would be the revenue if we raise the rates from $96 per quarter to $106 per quarter. Obviously, the measured rate, you know, we would adjust those accordingly. It's just a mathematical, mathematical formula. Now, if, uh, so if you look at the current year, uh, if you were to institute this now, the difference between the 720 and the 652, you would then multiply that times 75 percent and would clearly get us out of the, uh, you know, get us out of the projected red. Now, Lynn, you, you mentioned, you know, you know, about defer, you know, waiting a little bit. Uh, you know, I, I can tell you, I, you know, we're not in the hole. We're not in the hole today. We're heading in the hole. You know, I, I guess the question is, you know, should we increase rates now or should we wait another three months and increase them then? Uh, I've changed my mind. Okay. I, I think we should move ahead. I think it's, uh, we, need to, we need to do this. It's only delaying the inevitable. Um, but I also think after your meeting last time, um, and I can sympathize with it because we just put in a brand new septic system based on baby wipes and sanitary wipes that, that just plugged our whole system. So I think we have to educate people to stop putting those down the toilet would be number one. But say, if you continue to do this, it's going to raise the rates even higher. And I think there's got to be twofold. And I thought maybe we could put it in the letter. Um, anything else that might be going through the system that isn't dissolving the way it should be. And just educate people, say, if this continues, if you continue to do this, the rates will have to continue to go up. Um, and if we, get, if we could get half the people to stop doing it, we'll be that much ahead. So I'll make the motion to um, up the rate to $106 a quarter with an education brochure to put in the next bill if, if Joan has time, and if not, to the next one, to the whatever, the, the next one or the following one. I'll second that. Motion made by Lynn, second by Matt. <clears throat> Further discussion? Ready? Yeah. Ready, and then I'll go to you. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether you've done this calculation, but so how long do you think we might last right. at going, I mean, we're, we're running, Asking raising it by $10, $10 per quarter, um, and um, I mean, is that going to, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but I mean, uh, you know, is that going to keep us and on the straight and narrow? What is the bond? The Five last years. So Five years. Five years. Yeah, we, the, we make the last bond payment November 1, 2022. I thought at the last meeting we had asked you to project out what would the rate need to be to get us without five having years. to raise it again for five years. I thought that was 106. Is that the 106? Yes. Okay. That'll do it. Well, that's you know, the guess. I, I mean, Best I, guess. You know, yeah. yeah, I'm, uh, you know, one of the things I, I you know, one of the things, Lynn, I think that you're absolutely mm -hmm. right that we need to educate people to uh, uh, to not putting, you know, the, when it's, you know, I, I think it's a, there's a labeling problem out there. They say something is flushable. Well, you know, I could isn't. flush a football down my toilet. That's not the <laughs> brightest thing to do. But but uh, anyway, the, the problem, the problem, you know, I mean, Andy, I, I really appreciate the the articles that you did and and. Uh, the particularly the picture not my picture but the picture of the of yeah. that pump in the yeah. rags yeah. okay i mean i'm telling you i'm just so convinced that that uh, you know how much how much could we possibly been pumping through that pump i mean i, I mean really i mean i just got to believe that that these overflows now that we've got them measured and now we know that the worst one that we encountered was 332,000 you know, when you got when you got two lagoons with four million gallons over there, you know, you know maybe if that, that maybe we could have been ready for that and got that flow over there, and it would have been it would have been fine. Point being is is that is that I, I think you're I think you're right, Lynn. 
but I also think that we're going to have to do something to the McDonough Drive pump station to catch those rags before they get to the pump. And I, so I think we're going to have to and hit it from both ends, and we need money to do I that. I think that's um, part of that uh, grant that we're going to be shooting for. Uh, well, we I haven't, haven't got to that yet. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, one of the things, you know, what I don't know is, is uh, relative to the capital, I, I mentioned that I only have $68,000 in that fund. We're replacing the furnace, but we're, uh, so that's, I don't know how much we're going to need to do some improvements to the McDonough Drive pump station. I don't have a handle on that. So that's the, that crystal ball, mm. you know, I, I, I can't, I can't tell you that. Um, and so we, we would know that by budget time though, right? And that could be uh, yeah, you know, I so. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I'll let me just tell you one thing. I and I know I know that you you know you you know you don't use you don't tend to use water tower money for sewer. But I but I can tell you you know it's 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 money. You know that it's an eligible project. It's a capital improvement project. Uh, you know, Bob, you had something, sir? Yes. How are we doing with our delinquent sewer tax collection? Well, what as is a that number currently was around 13 grand plus at the last count. Where sure. are we now? So I can I don't give you I can't give you the exact number, That's but I explained. Lynn asked me that same question last meeting, and so I, I, let me just tell you that let's just say that it's today it's twenty two thousand dollars. Let's just say that that's the number. Let me just tell you that from an accounting standpoint our auditors allow us to count delinquent sewers at 100 percent of their value so it it is that receivable so it so the the, the those twenty two thousand dollars if we collected it would we would be in no different position financially cash flow yes but it would not it's not like it would add twenty two thousand to the uh, to the fund because it's regarded as an asset yeah well anyway the way that we collect sewer is the, the way that we collect sewer is no different than the way we collect taxes if somebody is behind in their sewer we put them up for tax sale that's what we do you know so I was intrigued by a, an article that I read in one of the local tabloids last month uh, regarding the grant application, $8,000. Um, and that was kind of an iffy thing. If we don't get it from, if we don't get the grant, then we're going to have to go to an alternate source. We'll find the money somewhere which kind of the question what were your thoughts uh, regarding the somewhere else the other option if you don't get the grant for the eight thousand dollars to do the study that you're just referring to regarding the sewer system um, what are your thoughts on that now? so uh, you're jumping ahead to item 6 oh, D I uh, <laughs> so uh, I, so so one of the things. So first off, Bob, just to be clear, yeah, you know, it, you know, the we will the twenty-two thousand dollars. We will go after that money. But I can just just tell you that from accounting, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, and I will. You know, you know, and I don't. We want everybody to pay. We actually charge one percent per interest, uh, one percent interest on outstanding sewers. So actually, it's the best investment that we have. To be honest with you. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really okay, but I'm not encouraging people to not pay their bills because we, we do, need, uh, do need cash flow. But I'm going to report on D in a, in a second. Once, uh, I, I did have one other follow-on to that article that I just referred to. Uh, it was the article before that. It had to do with when you folks were juggling budget numbers and preparing the city budget. There was a comment in there that I didn't quite pick up on. It, it, it was in regard to tax exemptions. 
who, what classification of personnel, of taxpayers, is exempt from paying which taxes? Okay, so. How does that work? So first off, everybody pays sewer. Right. Okay, except for the city doesn't bill itself, all right? Relative to taxation, uh, you know, s schools don't pay property taxes. What about veterans exemption? Veterans exemption, that's kind of where I was going. Oh, that's okay. So that's what you're talking about? <coughs> Vet veterans exemption is that a qualified vet veteran can receive up to $40,000 reduction in their assessment in determining their, uh, the, the calculation of their tax bill. That's property taxes. Property taxes, ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but that exemption doesn't apply to any other tax levied by the city. Yeah. That, that's Water, correct. Or like sewer that's tax correct. Or, okay, that that's was correct. the question that I had. Because yep. in, your, in your comments, in the article, I forget who, who wrote the article about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of you all, anyway, who submitted it. Uh, it said that allowances had to be made for veterans exemptions. Now I oh, that the that's only on the property tax side. Is that when you when you when you you get, when you get your magnifying glass out and with your property tax bill when you get home tonight, you will see a .0037 rate on your property tax bill, and what that rate is is that small rate .0036 or whatever it is multiplied times the grand list generates enough money. In education taxes, there's a the forty thousand dollars that I just mentioned to you. The way that it works is ten thousand is grandfathered, thirty thousand can is recaptured by the state of Vermont. So what happens is, is those ten or twelve veterans that have that exemption, we calculate that take the thirty thousand, multiply it times the education rate that they normally would have paid, and we have to capture that money from that local rate. Also. We, there is a voter exemption for the rescue squad and a voter exemption sure. for the Odd Fellows Hall. The rescue squad, they do not recapture that money, but they do recapture the money for the Odd Fellows Hall. That's what that that's what that little rate is about. Oh, that's what that. Is. Oh, thanks. We're okay. gonna we're gonna, we're getting off track here a little bit, and I want to pull this back okay. because. Thank, thank but 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 if there's My additional ball. information that needs to be done, please feel free to stop by. But it's the, these type of questions, Bob, that we need. And that's where, at the beginning of the meeting, if, if you have issues uh, where it calls for citizens' comment, that would be a good point for those questions to be asked. Okay. But, but thank you. Really. Okay, so so we ha have that motion on the floor, right? We have a right? motion on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so what comes in my mind is what would, what would the citizens like more? Would it be better to um, go up by essentially forty dollars for the year um, uh, in their rates and not do anything for five years, or go up by half that amount and go a couple of years and then raise it again uh, because that way they get a twenty dollar impact? There are some communities that actually you do their sewer rates like their regular budget, and every year. They look at the budget, they look at the sewer rate. Is it doing fine? Is it not doing fine? And they adjust it basically annually if, if necessary. So we've got all of those options. I'm, I'm a, I, I like the idea, and, and the last time we raised sewer rates, I was manager, it took a big jump. But the, the, the sewer uh, budget and the sewer revenue, it was deeply in the hole. Um, and that was the only way we were going to be able to crawl out of it. Um, I, I, I'm half thinking that I'm not so sure that I want to stick 40 bucks increase all in one year on the sewer rate payers when if we do half of that, um, it presumably will get us a few years down the road and then we adjust it again, knowing that we're going to adjust it again. Um, we don't know whether our financial circumstances with the sewer plant will change at all, but um, the the thing you know, that Mel was tasked with was to give us a five-year window. Right. Uh, and, and your point your point is very good, Randy. But I'm just he was tasked with that. So if we're looking at other options, now's now's the point of discussion. 
I would prefer that we just bite the bullet and we put it to rest. Uh, it, it, in the end, it really is only forty dollars, and that that forty dollars could become eighty dollars in two years if we don't do some advanced planning. And I think if we just bite the bullet now, we're going to find ourselves well ahead of any other problems. But I, I, I'm very embarrassed that we have to revisit this after having just raised in, the rates anyway in the last eight months or whatever it was. I think it was a year, but oh, yeah. that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> what was the rate less? 87.50. 87.50. I'm embarrassed that we're having to address it and I would rather put it to bed for five years, personally. I think the um, salesmanship of this is it's $10 a quarter. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it is. Right. Any other comments? I. I hate to say it, I don't think 10% is going to do it because if we were 8750 a year ago and we're 96 now, which is essentially 10%, I don't see that a 10% jump now is going to push us five years. But as I recall, Mel told us eight months ago or a year ago it wasn't going to get us with the right. And there was a couple of votes that led us to have this interim measure. Um, but the guidance we're getting now is that this will get us through the five-year period. I'm not saying I'm not s s saying that you're never going to re. You know, you know, uh, no, it's a projection. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. You know, you're just you're 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 fearful that you're not going to make it to. The if we the did a ten percent jump in a year ago, and we're right. eight thousand in the hole. If we're going to do a ten percent jump, I don't see that that's going to get us five years. I mean, I think it's, we need to jump something, but I don't think we're going to get, I think we're going to be two, two and a half years down, even with the 10% and having to go revisit this. I, is there anything, Mel, that substantiate Smirks? What's that? Is there anything that you know that would substantiate Merck's concern? Yes. Well, there is, uh, uh, you know, some of these numbers, Sure, I could I could make a spreadsheet with a million columns of things. This is just the way that I attacked it. All right. I'm not That's not going to. No, I mean, I'm, what I'm and what I'm what I'm saying is is that can can you know I I do feel that the city council can maintain a budget of seven hundred eighteen thousand dollars a year. All right. Now, how are you going to do? How are you going to do that? All right. Well, number one, some of the the wages are going to go up. The the electricity I have there at eighty thousand dollars, and I really feel that we're a little high on electricity because of the relationship with the solar panel. If you noticed, the two years ago it was sixty five. All right, I, I wrote eighty because that's what we spent last year. Uh, I really don't think I think that number is too high. <coughs> Uh, down under sewer line maintenance repair, that $15,000, that is because we have been doing a lot, of, lot more sewer cleaning this year and, and next year because of Vermont gas. That's why we're, we're having to locate all of these lines, and if we're going to locate them, we're going to flush them out, and we, we've been paying that bill. So we're not talking about replacement we're just talking about sewer line maintenance you know clean cleaning lines so that fifteen thousand dollars i don't think that is needed so the eighty isn't needed for five years the fifteen thousand isn't needed for five years the sewer line replacement you know i don't know what the right number is mark forty thousand fifty thousand twenty thousand whatever it is it is what i'm so in wages we are going to spend more money in wages over the next five years and i i started with the spreadsheet and started to project increases and why don't i just not project anything and just say just keep in mind that the wages are going to go up so I really, I do feel that the city council can. Your, I can, if you, if you do, if the city council does proper budgeting, and and sticks to it, I think that this can make it five years on fumes. Okay, all right. And then when you get, and then that bond will be paid off, and you really should be fine. All right. You know, I. I, I, I hear you. 
but you are the city council is in control of some of these numbers you know I mean like Jimmy and I we don't do we don't replace sewer sewer lines with no money there has to be money in the sewer line replacement fund to replace the line so uh, and we're just not out there you know Christmas shopping on as to which line gets replaced but also you're soon gonna get you're gonna get this result of this sewer line study all right so uh, the crystal ball, Rennie, is actually going to be a little clearer here when we get the result of this study, so we then will know really how much clay tile is left out in this community and how many years it's going to take us. So, you know, I mean, sure. There's you know, a lot of clay tile in my house. I know, I know. So, you know, I, you know I'm not going to... I think, I think the city, you know, I think the city council can... Over, can over the next five years, maintain that rate. I think that they can. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. We have one, two, three, four, five, six in favor, one in, not in favor. God, I thought sure that Mark was going to vote no. No, I'm voting yes. I'm just saying, I, know, but I think we're going to be talking about this in two or three years. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that you would vote no because you felt it should be higher. I think it should be. No it should well, be I don't think it should be higher because I think that would be too much of a shock. But it is not going to be surprised if whatever council is sitting here in two or three years is going to be saying, <laughs> we need more money. Lynn, F1. I want to quickly make this comment, and um, I want to thank Mel publicly for helping us out on this. But um, by an accident of nature, uh, we found out that one of our houses that's being sold, their, their line crosses behind another person's house. And the lawyer considered that a title defect because there was no easement for that line that we could find that we could find <laughs> and it doesn't in my opinion this is only my opinion my opinion is because of this document that I gave you there doesn't need to be an easement and I don't want to send the precedence of having to have an easement to go and fix a, 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 a sewer line that crosses someone else's property I think this section 14 is very clear that the sewer lines, no matter whose property they're on, are owned by the public authority of the city of Virgins. So this woman that crosses, Mel has got her permission to give an easement, but I don't feel that we should be getting into the business of getting easements for sewer lines that cross prop, uh, private property and my office is a great example. We have three or four people all going into one sewer plant. And if somebody's sewer line above me broke, I would, of course, want them to fix it. But they don't, I don't want to have to ha sign an easement or I don't want to have to call a lawyer and say, is, you know, should I do this? Or in this, the case that I have, they wanted money. So that's not fair to you know, these systems have been in there for 100 years or whatever it's been. And I just, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page on this and that we're clear that we don't necessarily have to have an easement that's already in the ground for a sewer line that's on a private property but needs to be repaired. Mel, I'm gonna lean on your wisdom as to do we have to have a motion, a vote, or what do we have to do here to, you know, or is, is everybody in favor of what Lynn is asking for? I mean, does everybody agree with section four, 14, I mean, as it's written here? And, and where does this document preside, anyways? Well, this is, this, is, uh, this is in the definition section of our sewer ordinance. So it uh, already exists in, in one of our documents. So I, I, I uh, I have talked to Jim Wimet about this just, you know, kind of briefly, and he actually ended up he had a conflict of he had a conflict of interest because he was involved with with both houses, the sale of the houses. But I think that I have not gotten back to him uh, on this because I really, in working with uh, uh, with Mike and the, the people, I, I really felt that instead of me spending 
more and more hours searching. It's like what I tell people, I don't mind looking for a needle in a haystack as long as I know there's one in there. I'm gonna get her in it, but anyway, I, I, so I spend a lot of time trying to find something which I don't, I don't think it's there because that's just not the way that business was conducted back in 1905, all right? But the point is, is that somebody's sewer line uh, goes over somebody else's property. Uh, you know, I, it would be great if, if, if there was something crystal clear in our ordinances that showed that really, that, that, the, that when that occurs, you, you really do have those rights and it can be repaired. You shouldn't have to go, you shouldn't have to go back and, and have an, an easement, you know. It should already be in place. I don't know whether or not that, uh, you, know, you know, whether or not when Matt interprets that to have that, but, you know, uh, what I think Lynn is getting at is sometimes these kinds of things halt the sale of a piece of property at no fault of their own. I mean, they, they bought a piece of property that's been hooked up to the city sewer f for 100 years. So, I don't, I don't know. Uh, really? Yes, go ahead. Well, I guess my question, and it's more of a legal question, is whether the city even has the authority to say that that shall be the case on public pro uh, on on private property. I mean, when a sewer line is laid across private property, um, and granted, in those days they didn't, you know, go through the formality of having easements and all of that stuff, but it's still a private line across private property. Um, and I'm not so sure that we have the authority to say that those are okay now and you've got rights because if your line does that on, on somebody else's property. Um, I, I really question whether legally we can even do that. Um, I, I mean, I have, the, I, have the same, I have the same case, not with my, my personal sewer, but there are private lines that cross my line, sure. my property, property yeah. to get to the sewer and when one of them broke, the person said, can I go on your property and dig to fix it? And I said, sure. I mean, I, there was no easement, but I think I probably could have said, no, you can't, too bad. Uh, or or um, pay me $1,000 for getting on my property. So here's, here's my argument of why I think we need to take a position hard on this. And that is, when the water lines were put in, it was more modern day. So easements were granted for people to pass the water on the, you know, if it was on their private property. You had, there's, in deeds, there's water easements, there's telephone poles, when there was telephone poles, and there's electric easements that are in deeds. There's nothing that's never addressed in a sewer thing, and that's because this is so old. And to, to force anybody, I mean, the only ha reason this happened is we were checking to see if there was a clay line. Mm -hmm. It's the only reason we knew it. Nobody is going to go and spend having someone, this, was, this cost them $500 to go and find out what this la line was, and then have a neighbor who initially said, no, you're not going to be able to do this. That's not right. And to have a buyer or a seller have to take on the responsibility of buying a neighbor out. I mean, there, it, in this case, it's only one, but it could have been four houses. You know, we have to, as a city, say, this is our lines. Yes, we're not gonna pay for it, which it says in this, by the way, if you wanna go read this hand type thing, um, that we're not responsible for the cost of it, but it is a public sewer line. It just happens to pass through private property, as all of the utilities do. So I'm not sure why sewer is any different than water, electricity, cable, whatever it's going to be. And so this is a this is a public sewer that's on private property. Well, it. I don't well, know if you would to call be, it you public. You classify something as it leaves the house to when it hooks up. Once it leaves the house, you're calling it public because it's a public utility. You want the sewage no, to go somewhere else. No, I don't say that. I'm just saying that you would have the right by, by this, what I interpret this to being, to fix your sewer line if it broke and you had to go on to another, a neighbor's property to fix it. You shouldn't have to pay them for the easement and you shouldn't have to have an easement paper to do it. Um, and if 
you know, if we were to really know where all our sewer lines are, and I guess we do now, is there's probably, I would guess, more than half the properties are encroached by someone else's sewer line. Why, why would we put people in, in the position of having to buy the, the easement or to be denied going onto the property? There, uh, I, well, I, I agree with you. If, if, if we can grant that relief, my, my question is whether legally we can grant the relief because it is private, it's a private line on private property. Um, I, don't, I don't know whether the city even has the authority to grant that relief. But what I'm saying is, but according to Section uh, 14, that's already in the sewer regulations. Mm -hmm. So I just don't want to start something that says, okay, we'll, we'll get this easement for this one house when all of us here might have that same issue someday. We, but, 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 but that we, line but is not... We, we don't own the line. No. We do own the main sewer line. I read that as a possibility, I could be reading it wrong, as we own the authority to go in and do anything to ours, but we, it doesn't say anything about them right. connecting to our sewer line. Right, that, that, no. that public yeah, line is, I mean, the pub, public authority doesn't, doesn't have a, any control it, over no, it. No, it doesn't become public until, it's private, until it connects to ours, which right. is public. But it also says that an abutting a property would have equal rights and is no, controlled by a, had, pro, a public authority. Yeah. So it's saying, I, which means a sewer to which all owners of abutting property have equal rights. So they're saying equal rights to that sewer. Mm -hmm. There are no equal rights to this. If, if I have a line going from my house, crossing my neighbor's yard and getting to the main line, my neighbor does not have any rights to my line. They have equal rights to the line I'm connecting to. They can't hook into right. my sewer line. No. But they can hook into the main line that all the neighbors are abutting to. And that's, the, I think that's the equal rights that's being referred back to, meaning uh, a sewer. This is a, this is a, it's a legal question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, legal, we, we need an I, answer. I, and I think we can't just leave it like this. We have to tend to it so that, first of all, our sale is probably going to have an easement, but I think that that's asking um, future buyers and sellers to take on a responsibility I don't think was there. Nobody nobody living today put those sewer lines in and said, oh, you right. can't fix them. I, th I think we have, like everybody's saying, is we, we need to get a, a, a legal opinion from somebody other than this council to make the proper decision so that we make the right, take the right action. So I don't think we can resolve this tonight. Um, and I'm I don't know who the legal party would be to approach and, and get the legal response, but I think that's the direction that we really need to head in because we're just going to keep bantering it back and forth. And mm -hmm. can we keep it on the agenda and look yeah. for a legal oh, yeah. opinion? Yeah, yeah, we can put it on the agenda, and, and meanwhile, we'll, I'll talk to Mel and see who we might be able to. Well, just I uh, think our situation, if, if, if she's still agreeing to the easement, might be okay for right now. But what I'm saying, let's not continue this. Right. No. So I, don't, I, I have no problem with Jim Wimette saying this is how you can proceed, even though he represented both buyers and sellers of all these houses. I don't, have a pro I don't think that's a conflict for him to do that, and he's our city attorney. Well, any, at any rate, he can do it on a gen generic basis. That's what I mean. Just, just, right. you know, yeah. if you have this situation, what can the city do? Okay. Is this public? Is this private? Yeah. If it's private, can the city do anything like okay. changing the deeds? But we don't know if we need that help. All right, so we're, we'll put it on the next agenda. All right, sandwich boards. Anything uh, that you can report? Or? Uh, just, just that um, I'm in the process of writing it. I've got it partially written. It's a lot more complex than I thought it would be because of all the research I have to do to, to try and find something that will fit for us. 
But uh, the only thing that uh, maybe um, the council may want to comment on is that right now I'm doing it as an as an ordinance amendment. So it would be chapter six, which is street sidewalks and parks, is is where I'm trying to sandwich this in as an ordinance amendment. Uh, but we can also take care of it as purely a policy, and I, I and so I'm not sure what is the best way to do it. Uh, it could be. A, just a policy that we have about these signs um, or doing an ordinance. But I'm writing it right now as an ordinance amendment. So we don't have to make a decision tonight? We'll no, not unless everybody says, no, we'd rather have it as a policy, you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll let the slide over through until the next meeting and then try to bring closure at that meeting. All right, uh, city manager's report. So uh, you do have an updated budget report. It's uh, it's still a little early, and uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip right over to B. All right, reserving dock space for cruise ship. I sh copied. Uh, uh, I give a copy of the email exchange, and uh, if you would like, um, Chris Peck would like to speak to the city council. Uh, so if if folks are interested in hearing his proposal, I'd be happy to invite him to an upcoming meeting. He says, he sounds good. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, traffic study portion of North Street as one-way street. You saw the email exchange I had with Adam. So, uh, uh, so timing is everything. And in this instance, it, it was not good. Uh, you know, I, I have not done anything since the last, since the last meeting. I do feel that we do need to improve some signage because when you're on the when you are traveling north on North Street, there's really I'm sorry when you're traveling south on North Street, there really is no indication to tell you that you can't turn left on Park Street. So we've got to, and there are some options as to what type of signage can occur there. So that needs to be done. Um, I you know I. Uh, I drive, uh, I, I drive that route all, all the time. I do think that we do need to continue to pay attention to tree, the tree limbs. As you're coming out from North Street onto Main Street, there is a couple trees there to the left that we need to keep track of. Is to, that uh, right away? That one of them isn't. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look at it. I know it's, there's one that's the big, on their the lawn, but it, but it might be. Uh, but, so there is some <coughs> trimming that could occur there. I will tell you that uh, the back side of, uh, of North Street, the back side of the park, I, uh, I, I, I always drive that way because I go, to the, go that way to go to the light. It's kind of weird the way it works because really it is a one lane road back there. And <coughs> but you never, I've never gone head to head with anybody. You always come to that intersection and, and if there's a car on there, you just, you just wait, wait. okay? Wait. <laughs> so it is a really, a funky situation. Uh, uh, so anyway, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know what you what you what you want to do with this. Uh, you know, there really is no accident history. Lots of times, traffic studies are the result of there's been some accidents, and you have a you have a you got to do a study. You got to do something. But I in, uh, in the interest of time, would people mind if we just move this to the next agenda and put it up in a. a Put it back in the action item, or sure, sure. Right. Okay. In the meantime, you'll figure out signage. And yeah, I'm going to figure. I mean, right now, I mean, really, I've got to have a no left turn, and the problem, the problem, there should be one there. And I looked at where it could go, and I can tell you, it's it's like, man, I don't really want to put it in front of Marsha's house. It's oh. there, uh, <laughs> it's a little. Hat. I'm, I'm just telling you. So it's a little. I I think that what we might end up doing is actually putting a one way sign on the on the other side of the street, you know, on the park, you know, or oh, do not enter. Um, I, I don't think they can see it, Randy. That, that's the problem. But anyway, we've got to get something to tell people don't be don't be turning left on a on a <coughs> park. We'll, we'll we'll figure that out. Okay. And relative to study, yeah, we can we can think about we'll next put that on next agenda. Uh, municipal planning grant sewer system. What I, uh, I I I really fully intended to get an application in until I got to looking at the details and municipal planning grants 
are eligible to study sewer type things, but you have to get your you have to get your uh, project, your planning project, approved by ANR before you can submit it to the agency of uh, of natural resources. So there was no way that I was going to get that approved, you know, get that planning project approved by the by the October two deadline. So I I didn't apply for that. So anyway, that's you know I will tell you that I I will tell you that I want to continue to move forward with looking at alternative improvements to McDonough Drive. I mean, I can, you know, I can contact engineers and get, you know, get some information because I really think that there's, you know, uh, I don't need to wait around for a grant. We can just get some. Well, let, let's talk because okay. there may be some other sources that, that are still in contention that we might be yep. able to get some money. Okay. All right. That's my other so, question. Is there, are there other yeah, sources yeah. we might find similar funding? So my my other topics of interest, uh, Melissa, M Melissa, oh, yeah. yeah, I sent it to Ray. Uh, so got a letter. Melissa dropped a letter off. Said, "Dear Mr. Holly, congratulations on your project successful application for funding." to the 2017 V-Trans Bicycle and Pedestrian Program. Your project was approved for $37,500 for rectangular rapid flashing beacons. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's great, Bill. That's great. <laughs> well, actually, the, yeah, that is great. It's really, this is, this is really a Rennie, Amy, Shannon, Haggett. I, I did proofreading <laughs> on this thing, and I think I hit the send button. All right, but anyway, that's uh, Well, we'll that's good. anyway. Good, thank you. <laughs> Okay. That's it for me. Great. Thank you. I'll make it in mine as brief as possible. Uh, tra uh, truck traffic through Regens. We had a meeting with Jeff, Rennie, Mel, and myself. We're at today. It's just a, the only reason I was there today is I, I'm the new guy in the block, and the other people were part of a previous meeting set up. So we're, we're talking. There is no silver bullet um, for truck traffic through Regens. So there's going to be some other meetings and we'll try to keep you posted as to kind of what's happening in those meetings because I don't want to give you any directions because we really don't have a set direction yet. But there is talk. We are back at the table and we're starting to schedule more meetings. So some more talk will happen. Pumpkins in the park. Uh, some citizens have uh, got together and they want to have pumpkins in the park on October 8th, uh, 28th and uh, more details will follow and we'll put it out on front porch form once they have a chance to meet. Uh, next meeting is October 24th and I'll make the motion to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> motion made by Lowell, second by all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed be quiet.